I'd like to welcome Dr. Helen Puinica Worms. She's Associate Director of Basic Science for the Siteman Cancer Center and Co-Director of the Bright Institute at Washington University School of Medicine. She is also the Gertie T. Corey Professor and Chair of Cell Biology and Physiology and Professor of Internal Medicine. Her talk is Exploiting Cell Cycle Checkpoint Control in Cancer Therapy. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Could you talk a little bit about the importance of cell checkpoint control and how it pertains to cancer research? Yes, so uh, checkpoints are essentially signal transduction pathways, and they play a very important role in the cell. Uh, they um, not only control the order of the cell division cycle, but they ensure its integrity. And so, for example, um, a cell doesn't want to try to segregate its genetic material if it hasn't completed DNA replication. And likewise, once it's um, made the commitment to segregate its duplicated genetic material, it doesn't want to do that before all of the sister chromatids are aligned properly and attached to microtubules. Um, in addition, they're very important for sensing DNA damage, and they don't want to move forward if there's been any um, you know, loss of integrity to the DNA. And so this can come in the form of single-strand breaks, double-strand breaks, or uh, interstrand crosslinks. So why this is important for cancer is that these checkpoints essentially serve as breaks on the cell division cycle. And what a cancer cell likes to do is um, increase the capacity of the gas so that the cell can move forward and then um, negatively impact the ability of the cell to break. And so a universal feature of cancer cells is that they derail these checkpoints. Um, but it's important, I mean, that a cancer cell still has to respond to its environmental stress, and so it doesn't derail all of them. How could this information be translated to impact patient benefit? So there's actually several ways that are being um, tried to um, utilize our current knowledge of how these checkpoint pathways work. So in one way, um, one could imagine, you know, what, what one of the things that checkpoints do if they're uh, senses a lot of damage is to induce cell death, and it would be really wonderful to get cancer cells to undergo apoptosis or uh, program cell death. And so one way is that uh, pharmaceutical companies are trying to develop agents that might, for example, reactivate one of the key uh, regulators, checkpoint regulators in cells, the p53 protein. So this is, again, a, a cancer cells, a, a, hot, a great majority of them, uh, derail the p53 pathway, and so they, they can't be shunted to a p53 dependent form of cell death. And so if you could reactivate p53 in these cells, you might be able to get the cancer cells then to undergo cell death in response to our normal chemotherapeutic and uh, radiation therapies. A uh, second way that is being considered is um, more a protective mechanism. So because these checkpoints are breaks, one could imagine that if you could get normal cells in the body to stop proliferating and then come in with the chemotherapeutic agent, you, in theory, should be able to protect the cancer patient from all the deleterious side effects that they normally, um, normally happen when they're given our, our current treatments. And then the third way, which is an area that my research uh, is most interested in, is um, actually causing cancer cells to lose the vast majority of their checkpoints with the hope then that we can give them a DNA damaging agent and then not allow them to pause and try to um, you know, repair that damage. And we can force them through these checkpoints and then try to force them into a, a type of cell death. And what are some of the clinical successes in this field of research? Yes, yeah, so there's um, these, the three strategies that I mentioned are all, there's clinical trials going on in, in all of these three arenas. And um, so, you know, they're early phase trials. Um, it's not standard of care yet. But we've had some very promising results in some clinical trials we've run with our medical oncology colleagues at Washington University School of Medicine, where, um, for example, we ran a phase one study where 25 patients with a variety of resistant solid tumors um, were enrolled, and they were given a DNA damaging agent followed by um, an inhibitor against a really important protein kinase called CHECK1, which controls two major checkpoints. And um, 
we got some pretty promising results in a cohort of patients with triple negative breast cancer. So this is promising because this particular form of breast cancer uh, is very aggressive and there currently are no targeted therapies. Um, so we're uh, continuing uh, this line of research with uh, more selective CHECK1 inhibitors. And um, I think the future uh, looks promising for, for really trying to attack uh, the checkpoints in these cancer cells. And finally, how did you and your husband come up with the concept of the Bright Institute? Yes, so um, as part of our, uh, our university's Biomed 21 initiative, uh, they asked for proposals from faculty for um, ideas uh, for new centers or institutes that the university uh, would support uh, in various um, areas of biomedical research. And so uh, my husband trained as an, uh, he received his MD, PhD uh, in his MD degree is in radiology. That's his, uh, or his residency specialty is in radiology. So he's a uh, has a lot of expertise in imaging. And so we sat down together and we said, all right, what are the strengths of our current strengths of our institution, which are in imaging? We have very strong, um, uh, our Genome Institute is very strong. And we have uh, set up a high throughput core. And so we came up with the idea of the BRIGHT Institute. So BRIGHT stands for Bridging Research with Imaging, Genomics, and High Throughput. And the idea is to capitalize on the strengths of our institution to really bring together a disciplinary, uh, multidisciplinary group of investigators to attack the cancer problem. And so our goal is to utilize all of the information that's being generated from our own Genome Institute as well as um, Genome Institutes throughout the world uh, where we are learning about all the vast array of uh, genetic alterations that occur in cancer cells and then really trying to understand which of these are important for the onset and evolution of cancer using imaging technologies, high throughput technologies, and various model organisms. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure.